Hey guys, this is Yoda. This will be a spreadsheet I made covering all the tanks in War Within Beta, focused on Mythic Plus. I've had the chance to play all the tanks at a relatively high level on the beta. I've been playing all day, uh, and I feel like I have a decent feel for how they all play. I've been getting a lot of questions about what I think will be meta, what's the tankiest, what should I play with my Resto Druid duo, or I have a pre-made of this, this, and this, what should I play? This will help answer most of those questions. Uh, so what I did is... I made a few categories, you know, completely arbitrary, what I think is valuable for a tank to have, and then I rated all the tanks in those categories. So we'll start uh, with the categories. So damage, obviously this is just how much damage you do as a tank, putting a little bit more value on single target, uh, and also raid buffs count, so PDH is like, you know, through the roof here. Next we'll go over uh, stability on trash, which is, you know, as a tank, your main goal, or the main hard part for tanking is surviving difficult trash pulls where all the mobs have like hard hitting melees or mini tank busters, whatever. Uh, so you know, a tank's ability to survive in those situations is definitely important. Next love stability on boss. So maybe kind of new-ish in the War Within. There's a bunch of bosses that kind of have like high frequency tank busters. No real like auto attack bosses, just a lot of like high frequency busters. So your ability to survive that is kind of important. Obviously if you die to a tank buster, then you're, you're probably wiping. Uh, generally tanks that have lower cooldowns or are stronger just baseline without cooldowns are going to be stronger against that type of thing. Self-sustain, uh, you know, what's your ability to heal yourself? What's your ability to make your health, health go up when it's already low? Uh, someone important among tanks. Nowadays, the norm is kind of that a healer is expected to help you out. But yeah, self-sustain is definitely valuable. Skill floor is basically just, you know, if you mess up or you fail your rotation, overlap defensives accidentally, or like just forget to push your whatever button, how likely are you to die? Uh, someone important for a lot of tanks because, you know, tanking can be stressful. Sometimes it's pretty hard to play perfect throughout the whole key, so... This is a bit important. Next we'll go over unique utility. So I didn't really rank all the tanks. I just kind of put like what they offer to the group compared to others. Since it's like hard to value like which one is actually better. And then overall, like how do I see these tanks stacking up against the meta and the other tanks? So we'll go over VDH first. Uh, damage contribution is a full 10. Chaos Brand is the best raid buff in the game, damage-wise. Uh, like even melees are doing mostly magic damage nowadays, and also they have the highest personal damage. I think that personal damage is going to get tapped down. Burning Blades uh, is a hero talent, that part of the Felsguard tree that BDH plays, uh, and it randomly got buffed by 300% a couple weeks ago or one week ago, and we're thinking that's going to get re-tapped down because I think it got buffed because it was like some misread on the how much it was contributing to Havoc damage based on like a bugged interaction, so surely it's going to get tapped down a bit, but even after it gets nerfed a bit, I think VDH is still going to be like one of the highest damage tanks, if not the highest, while still having Chaos Brand. So it's going to be definitely still a 10 on the damage contribution. Uh, next, we've got stability. So on trash VDH, uh, in meta, you're like giga tanky. You pretty much can't die. Um, but outside meta, you are kind of weak, depending on your build, depending on what cooldowns you have. Um, I would say if you have illuminated sigils and you have like sigil flame and spikes, you're probably all right. But if you're like playing double sigil or double, double brand and you only have spikes, you're probably not tanky enough. You're going to need massive healing. If you have no spikes, you're just dead. So if you're able to rotate your cooldowns properly, then I think I'd say it's somewhat tanky, definitely healable. Um, but if you have like gaps in your cooldown rotation, which you definitely will, uh, you're gonna need either like an external or extra healing, or you have to kite one of those. So we're giving it a seven. On bosses, uh, BDH is quite tanky. You have Soul Crush most of the time. I would assume most people are gonna play Soul Crush. Uh, which means that you're having like up to 35% damage reduction just baseline against the boss while still being able to rotate between Bran and Feldev, so you should be pretty tanky against most bosses. Uh, for self-sustain, I would say VDH is a 7. I think you definitely require healer attention, especially outside meta. Most of your healing nowadays comes from frailty healing, so like, if, when you have Soul Crush, you apply multiple frailty stacks to the mobs, and then all the damage you do in those frailty windows is heals you, is kind of like Leech. Uh, that got nerfed, so, you know, I would say you're definitely not fully self-sufficient, but especially outside meta, uh, but you do have quite a bit of self-sustain. Skill floor, if you are, as I said before, if you're outside cooldowns, you're probably just going to die or have to kite or require massive healing depending on, like, you know, the pack or whatever. Uh, but inside meta, you can kind of just AFK brain and you'll probably stay alive. So we're giving it a 2. I think BDH is probably one of the more punishing tanks when played improperly. You're also somewhat reliant on parry RNG so that, like, gambling that way is not for everyone. Uh, for unique utility, the sigils that it has are severely nerfed. There's no more double sigil. You have all the nerfs that BDH got in Season 4. So it's like longer silence duration or longer silence cooldown, shorter duration. Um, you do have the ability to do some skips like misery into your group house through into meld. That's still there. Imprisoned skips are still there. Darkness is actually insanely relevant uh, in the war within. Most of the like group damage AOE hits, I think Blizzard's moved away from like pure one shots and they tend to be like just ticking events. 
Uh, and darkness is way more effective against those ticking events because it's like actually reliable. Like let's let's say you take like six hits, darkness will probably proc at least one of them. Whereas if it's like one hit for your whole health bar, darkness only has a 30% chance, right? So it's not reliable. Um, so darkness is way better and more within than it was before. Overall, I'll give VDH a nine. Uh, the damage contribution definitely plays a big plays a big factor here. And then also I'd say like it's tanky enough. I wouldn't say it's the tankiest tank, but it's like tanky enough to survive uh, with some attention. So we're definitely giving it a nine, which is the highest of all the tanks. Even after the tap down burning blades, which I assume will happen, I would still say it's probably you know up there just because of the damage contribution from Chaos Brand for Bear. Uh, damage contribution, we're giving it a 9. Uh, a bit lower than Vengeance Demon Hunter. Personal damage, I think, is about on par with the rest of the tanks playing Illusion's Chosen. If you play Druid of the Claw, your single target is actually very, very high for tanks. But I don't think it's viable to play Druid of the Claw in high keys because you might just die to random trash bowls if you don't have Incarn. Um, so I think we're probably playing Illusion's Chosen, which means your damage is on par. Uh, but you have Mark of the Wild, so, you know, raid buff is worth, like, way more than personal damage, so we're going to give it a 9 there. Stability on Trash, I think Bear is probably one of the tankier tanks. On Trash, especially at Incarn, you're just, like, immune to damage pretty much. And you have a lot of cooldowns to rotate through, like, with Lunar Beam being an extra cooldown, Bar Skin, and in general, just, like, Iron Fur is really effective against a lot of tank, a lot of Trash pulls. So I think you're probably one of the tankier tanks against Trash. Uh, against bosses, I would say Bear, that's Bear's weak point. Uh, you know, it's, most bosses are going to be doable. But you're going to have to rotate through your own cooldowns and healer external to survive a lot of these bosses with high frequency tank busters. Uh, and you're probably going to need to be top for a lot of those tank busters as well. Definitely one of Bear's weaknesses because your cooldowns tend to have a longer CD than other tanks. Like I know Bark is only 30 to 40 depending on what talents you take, but a lot of other tanks have just better than that. Uh, Self-sustain, we're giving it an 8. Definitely better than VDH, but not the best of all the tanks. Frenzied Regen took a pretty heavy hit going into the War Within with all the tank nerfs. Has a longer cooldown from missing talent from uh, talent nerfs, and it also heals you for less than it did before. Uh, so you do require some healer attention, but uh, Bear Self Sustain is still pretty good compared to most other tanks. I would say it's like second best compared to Bloody Cake. Skill floor, uh, I would say Bear is probably one of the easier tanks to play. Uh, you only have like three buttons really that you need to rotate through uh, in your normal rotation, and then all your rage just gets stumped into Iron Fur or some for Frenzied Regen. And your cooldowns, like during, in you just pretty much just in-card off cooldown and then you hold like Bark and SI for actual hard events. So I would say Bear is probably one of the easier tanks to play and it's very hard to like mess up really, mess up like super badly. So we're going to give it a 4 for skill floor. Uh, unique Utility, the Dispel that Bear has is actually very, very useful. Curse Dispel is extremely valuable in a couple dungeons, especially like Grim Batoll uh, and Stone Vault. And it's the only tank with Curse Dispel. You also have the normal Druid stuff, Stampeding Roar, Vortex. You have Dream of Scenarios for off-healing. Uh, the main weakness Bear has in terms of utility is that it doesn't have any single stops. You basically only have in-cap Roar and Typhoon. If there's like one mob casting, you have to use an AoE stop. You can't use a single stop for it, which is not like the biggest weakness, but you know, it's there. So we'll give Bear an 8.5. Say right now, the raid buff is definitely a big con contributor to that uh, for Bear having like its quote-unquote second best tank spot in my eyes. Um, but yeah, next we'll go over Prot Warrior. So Prot Warrior actually, I think, out after VDH, which is probably getting nerfed, it probably has the highest damage contribution, uh, personal damage contribution of all the tanks. The only reason I would put it a little bit below Bear is because Bear is Mark of the Wild, you know, buffing the group by 3% is really good. And Battle Shroud tends to not be as useful in today's WoW, since, you know, Mage and Og are just going to be in every meta comp. There is a small chance that you play a melee, or I think not a small chance. Most a lot of pugs and some like top groups will probably play a melee in the third spot where so battle shot will be good there. And on top of that, Prot Warrior, as I said, has very high personal damage and spell reflect is also very useful against a lot of mobs. So I would say damage wise, Prot Warrior is looking very good. Uh, in terms of stability on trash and both on and on boss, I would say Prot Warrior is actually probably the safest tank uh, for all of those. Shield shield block is very very relevant against most damage that you take, like it's all almost all melees and a lot of boss melees or boss tank busters were recently adjusted to be blockable. Uh Sprout Warrior is very strong against those as well. You also have pretty low cooldown tank cooldowns such as shield wall. Cooldown was recently reduced. Plus you have a talent that gives you two charges, which makes it like even lower CD. Then you also have you just have a bunch of short CD uh, mitigations that you can rotate through. So it's very strong against bosses with tank busters, also very strong against trash. The one weakness Prot Warrior has is the self-sustain. You are basically unable to heal yourself. Uh, you have like some self-healing, like uh, you have Indomitable, no pain, no gain, or pain and gain. Ignore pain, I don't know if I would count. And then you also have uh, Victory Rush, but compared to other tanks, your self-healing is very low. Uh, if you make mistakes, you are kind of dependent on a healer to like recover through them. Kill Floor, I would say Prot Warrior is relatively easy to play, but if for some reason you let shield 
block fall, then you're going to be in trouble. If you fail to rotate your cooldowns properly against like magical tank busters or dots, then you're going to be in trouble. And uh, Spell Reflect actually plays a, plays a decent role in Prot Warrior's mitigation, especially uh, in Mists of Turn of Scythe, like two of the hardest tank mobs are reflectable. So gaming your Spell Reflect on those mobs is relatively important. So I would say Prot Warrior is relatively easy to play, but you know, to get value out of your cooldowns and Spell Reflect takes a little bit of gaming. So we're giving it a three here. For Unique Utility, uh, we've got Reflect, and we also have Rally and Intervene to keep the group alive. Which are like not that crazy compared to some what some other tank spraying, but you know, it's there. It's not like you're completely AFK in terms of keeping the group alive. For stops, Warriors actually has some of the lowest cooldown stops. You've got Shockwave, Stormbolt, and Fear. Uh, Stormbolt is at very, very low cooldown compared to most other stops, so you're definitely in the game when it comes to that. Overall, uh, I'd give them an 8. Basically, this best a tank can be uh, without providing a raid buff, I'd say, like a relevant one. So that's, uh, I think Prot Warriors looking really good for War Within. Next, talk about Blood Decay. Damage contribution, I give them a 7.5. Uh, Blood Decay damage is somewhat high, but they keep tapping it down, I think, because of Raid. But I would say it's still, like, you know, above average for tanks. You also have Grip, which I know is not, like, technically a Raid buff or anything, but having the mobs more grouped, which Blood Decay is definitely more capable of than other tanks, contributes a lot to having good group damage. So we'll give it a 7.5 here. For stability on Trash, uh, you kind of have to rotate through your cooldowns usually. Uh, like you've got Rune Weapon and Vamp Blood into Lichborn, into Rune Weapon again, into Iceborne maybe. And then if you have Rune Tab, you can also use that to fill gaps. Um, but if you fail to do that, you will probably be taking a lot of damage. Like your health bar is going to look like a yo-yo. Uh, you can sometimes heal, you th heal yourself through that with proper pooling of Runic Power. But if you fail to do that, you're probably going to cheat or die. I would say Blood Decay... If you like have ever looked at a Blood Decay's health bar, you would say they're not really that stable. But if the Blood Decay is really good and in control, then they can survive, you know, I would say the hardest keys compared to all their tanks. I would say Blood Decay is definitely up there when it comes to surviving the hardest pulls. For bosses, Blood Decay is probably the tankiest tank, if not you know, one of them. You have extremely short cooldown abilities, uh, such as Vamp Blood and Rune Tab if you play that, and AMS, which are very good against Tank Busters. It's pretty hard to die to Tank Buster as a Blood Decay, as long as you're, like, you know, thinking at all about it. Self-Sustain Blood Decay is still is the only remaining tank that can basically survive any pull without a healer. Like, if you can survive it without it, if you can survive it with a healer, then you can survive it without a healer, basically. Uh, so yeah, Blood Decay is getting the full 10 when it comes to Self-Sustain. Definitely, like, the main reason I enjoy playing Blood Decay. Uh, for skill floor, I would say it's a uh, 2, probably one of the more punishing tanks. If you fail to rotate your cooldowns properly, you die. If you fail to pull RP and then time your death strikes, you die. Uh, if, if you get unlucky with Dancing Rune Weapon procs and you didn't play around that, then you die. Uh, the only reason I would say it's a 2 instead of a 1 is because Blood Decay has the only remaining true cheat death of all the tanks. Like, VDH has one, but you kind of are wanting to play Soul Crush, especially with the new builds. Uh, Prot Warrior has one, but it's not a true cheat death, because it procs kind of, like, too early sometimes. Then Prot Pelly has one, but it's, like, complete garbage, so we're not even going to talk about it. Um, so Blood Decay is the only remaining true cheat death, which is why I would give them a 2 here instead of a 1. It's very punishing when played improperly, and it's very hard to play properly as top level. Uh, for Unique Utility, as I mentioned before, we have Grip. Grip is super relevant. Um... In a lot of bosses, a lot of trash encounters, there's mobs that just sit outside, like casting shoot or bomb toss or whatever it is. Uh, so grip is really useful getting those in. Uh, AMZ is really useful. There's a lot of, you know, magical hits on the group that you can help keep the group alive with. AMS and Death Advance are actually super relevant in this Thunder Pool, particularly in Arakara. Death Advance is crazy. Like there's mobs that just apply a 90% slow to the tank, and then you're just a Death Knight with Death Advance, you're like, LOL, I can't be slowed. Uh, AMS can be used to immune certain tank busters, like for instance in City of Threads. There's one that like hits you and then the group has to soak. And then also it's overlapping with a massive group damage event. So if you just AMS it, that's like really good. Uh, so yeah, I would say Blood Decay has really good utility there. Overall, I would say they're an 8. You know, they don't really bring a raid buff compared to like VDH or Bear. Uh, and they're relatively hard to operate. But, you know, it's pretty rewarding when you do play it well. You're like basically immortal. Um, so yeah. Blood Decay, I would say, is one of the good tanks. Uh, Brewmaster, we've got damage contribution at a 7. I would say Brewmaster is kind of like, even after the Shadow Pan buffs, is still, I would say, on the lower end, maybe slightly below average or just average. 
in terms of damage and the raid buff which is mystic touch is not very useful unfortunately in today's while well, most of the damage dealt is magical so mystic touch is just not that good for stability on trash i would say they're seven uh you do have the stagger mechanic but if you, you know, fail to like use your bruise properly or if you're just low on cooldowns it can add up very quickly and your health can plummet pretty quickly uh and you are definitely reliant on a healer to offset the stagger that you're taking. So we're giving them a seven here. Stability on boss, you kind of get a free pass on most bosses because of stagger again, where normal tanks like have to have active mitigation, you kind of just have to have stagger up, which you always have. Uh, you can also have Celestial Brew for most tank busters and you have a decent amount of cooldowns to rotate through. So I'd say Brew is probably one of the tankier tanks against bosses. For self-sustain, we are gonna give them a six, I think, outside of Warrior. While Brew can heal itself, I would say it's like kind of offset by having like staggered damage. Um, so I'm giving it a six. I think you definitely require a healer more than most other tanks. In terms of skill floor, I would say Brew is somewhat hard to play properly, but if you fail and you play improperly, like you just have no cooldowns, you can often just be healed through because as I said before, stagger makes the damage you take a little bit more smooth. So if your healer is really good, they can probably recover most mistakes that you make. Um, for unique utility, Brew I think is a little bit lacking. You have your dispel, but disease dispel is not really relevant. It's really just poison dispel. And you have some op healing, like you have a free vivify that's fast or instant cast every now and then. Um, but other than that, it's like not that crazy. You don't have like a group, you don't have like a real group cooldown. The avoidance and healing increased buffs that Monk had are gone now. Uh, so I'd say unique utility brew is a little bit lacking. AOE stops, you know, you have sweep, rop, and para, so it's, it's definitely playing the game there. But in terms of like keeping the group alive, it's not as good as other tanks, I think. So overall, I'm giving it a seven and a half. You know, still strong, but missing like a little bit compared to other tanks. Prot Pally uh, is my favorite tank. Unfortunately, in War Within, they are not doing so hot. So damage contribution. By the way, all these ratings are assuming you play Sentinel. If you play Crit Wings, then you know you're going to be a little bit squishier, obviously. But you'll have higher self-sustain and more damage. But assuming you play Sentinel, damage is quite lacking. On Prot Paladin, it was like on par, and then Lightsmith randomly got nuked from orbit and just does half the damage that it used to do. Templar is unplayable, so you still have to play Lightsmith. Um, so yeah, Paladin is not looking good damage-wise. Giving it a five and a half. The ability on Trash, uh, Paladin is probably also not very good here. It just feels squishier than other tanks. Uh, it's kind of like a warrior, I guess, except you don't have shield block. You have like instead faith in the light. I feel like I think Paladin with Shield of the Righteous up is like as tanky as Warrior with nothing. So think of it that way. Paladin with Faith in the Light is like as tanky as Warrior with Shield Block. But as I said, Warrior, you don't you don't have 100% uptime on that. And then also maintaining Faith in the Light means you're going to go oom, just like spamming Wog on yourself. So that's not great. On bosses, Paladin is also not looking so good. You do have you do have the ability to rotate between like Bubble and Arden and Golak. Like you have a lot of cooldowns to rotate through, but... Uh, the one problem you have there is you are just taking like more damage baseline than other tanks like just boss melees hurt you more than other tanks so uh, you kind of like, have to top yourself before every single every single buster or you need healer help to top yourself so in that sense paladin is not great against bosses for self-sustain you do still have word of glory to cast on yourself even though it doesn't heal very much it hurts for like a quarter of your health bar that said you know it's still more than some other tanks have like compared to a prop where you definitely heal yourself more you just also require more healing because you're taking so much more damage. For skill floor, we're definitely giving Paladin the one. You have to like know exactly what cooldowns you need for every situation. If you don't have them, you're very likely to just die instantly. Uh, you have no baseline like mitigation compared to other tanks. Like you have Shield of the Righteous, but Shield of the Righteous just puts you like on par. You need something on top of that to uh, compare to other tanks. Like for instance, a warrior with block is like as tanky or more tanky than a Paladin with Shield of the Righteous and Consecrate. So. Like baseline, your baseline tankiness is very low you, and you're you're reliant on cooldowns and potentially Faith in Light if you're playing that. Most people don't even play that uh, to actually stay alive. So I would say Paladin Skill Floor is a one. It's like Blood Decay, but you don't have cheat death and you also heal yourself for less in terms of personal survivability. Uh, for Unique Utility, Paladin is still probably the best tank, which is one of my favorite reasons to play them. The Dispel is not that relevant, because like I said, for Brew, you just have Poison Dispel, Disease is not super relevant. But Avengers Shield can completely change how your group plays the game. For instance, like, if there's two casters, like, you can just solo one, group kicks the other one, whereas otherwise, two people on each kick and then do AoE stuff to make time for kicks. It's a lot harder to play, but with Paladin, you just solo one, and your group kicks the other one. 
Uh, you still have one minute sec, really good at keeping your group alive. You can rotate between bubble and spell bop to immune certain mechanics. So I'd say Paladin's like unique utility is still the best in the game, but like at actually being a tank, they're probably the worst. And they also do really low damage. So for that reason, we're giving Paladin really low rating of a six. Hopefully, you know, Paladin gets buffed or so in some way in the near future. Uh, but for right now, it's not looking good. I'd say if you're a Paladin, like one trick, Paladin enthusiast, you can definitely still get title with it. It'll just be harder than the other tanks. Uh, all right, so that's where we're at with all the tanks. Thank you for watching. As a reminder, these are just my opinions. I'm not perfect. I can easily be wrong. And uh, balance patches could easily happen, which change everything. So this is where we're at. I'm kind of happy with the tank balance and where we're in outside of Paladin. Like, it seems like all the tanks are at least playable. I would not be surprised to see like four to five different tank classes in the top 20, maybe like three in the top 10, uh, which is like unheard of for recent Dragon, for recent Mythic Plus season. So it's looking, it's looking good uh, tank balance wise. All right, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. Peace out.